all systemic treatments for atopic dermatitis, except for the newest one, are used off-label. And we've used those because we had nothing else to use. And we had patients who were suffering. So we turned to, to what I call the big guns, you know, the systemic immunosuppressant medications. And there are four of them. Um, methotrexate, cyclosporin, azathioprine, and mycophenolate that are standard, have been standard used um, for just habit reasons. People don't use some of the other immunosuppressants like uh, tacrolimus. That one probably doesn't work as well systemically, although it's used topically. Um, but it, and it has a lot of side effects. So we use those in adolescents, and they're used in adults. They're just difficult to use, and they have a lot of side effects. My favorite one is methotrexate, though. I, methotrexate's not so difficult to use. You take it once a week, but it's a little bit difficult to adjust. It's got a very slow onset. Um, the dose is not well worked out. Uh, it requires lab monitoring, and the parameters for even monitoring methotrexate uh, are not uniformly accepted, but it's used for so many diseases by different specialties, GI and rheumatology and hematology, oncology and allergy, immunology, and now uh, uh, dermatology. So, so we use a lot of methotrexate, but we have a lot of unknowns. In fact, we're, we are just uh, sponsored by the Pediatric um, Dermatology Research Alliance. We have a, a big consortium that we're working on now for uniform guidelines for use of methotrexate um, for for all kinds of inflammatory skin diseases, but it's it's a mainstay of treatment for atopic dermatitis, and it's a good treatment. Um, but uh, in adolescence, it's a uh, uh, it, for females of childbearing years, it's a abortifactant and a teratogen. So once you get to be that age and you've been on methotrexate for a while, it's time to get off. The use of systemic therapies for children with atopic dermatitis is uh, receiving a lot more attention. What we know now. Uh, and we've known for a long time, but uh, we're, this is part of the education for uh, we spoke of earlier about um, what needs to be known about systemic therapies. The ones that are used for children are all used off label except for prednisone. And we also know prednisone is a very risky, systemic prednisone is a very risky drug for children and adults. So uh, there are many risks with those uh, systemic therapies. They need to use, be used with extreme caution. And um, now we know we have a, uh, a newcomer to the market, a new biologic, um, that uh, we are very hopeful is a uh, safer drug. And we also know that uh, the ongoing studies and the value of um, the biologic has uh, received great acclaim uh, so far. So we are thrilled and very excited about that. But um, one of the greatest questions we get at the National Eczema Association from moms and dads uh, when their topicals fail and they're at their wits end and they want to know what did they turn to next. We talk about the current systemic therapies, and they are very um, surprised to learn that, one, they're not indicated for atopic dermatitis, and that they come with the risks that they do. Uh, so uh, they can be effective, and um, they can be used uh, in the short term. I don't think they are seen as a long-term uh, solution for moderate to severe atopic dermatitis. Regarding side effects of the immunosuppressants that are used for atopic dermatitis, methotrexate is really the most well tolerated. There are well known side effects and uh, liver toxicity is one of them. Although liver toxicity is probably related to other risk factors, so in adults, and particularly adults with psoriasis, which is a disease where methotrexate has been used historically a lot, uh, they tend to be overweight and they drink. And those are big risk factors for uh, liver problems. And so in that population, methotrexate is a lot harder to use. Children really don't have those risk factors, and particularly children with atopic dermatitis, they tend to be thinner rather than bigger. And so uh, that's one of the reasons that methotrexate is a great drug for that population. Uh, a small percentage of, of kids get sort of queasy and, you know, they get nauseated. And sometimes they'll 
have some lab abnormalities, low white count, or a little bit elevated liver tests, those may or may not actually be related to the methotrexate. And you can really mitigate the nausea if you just take supplemental folic acid. So methotrexate is really well tolerated. It's a cheap drug. It, it works well. Um, but it's not FDA approved for this condition. <laughs> and, you know, we would like it to be. We would like to use it as an active comparator for trials of new medications. But that's never going to happen for those kind of um, uh, medical legal reasons that it's not FDA approved. And, and a lot of people are hesitant to use methotrexate just for that reason. Uh, people are also kind of frightened of methotrexate because it's used in very high doses, 300 times the dose that we use for atopic dermatitis for children who have leukemia. It's a miracle for those children, part of their reason that they're that that's got such a high cure rate now, but it's sort of scary for people to think about using a drug like that. Uh, cyclosporin is the next most common one, and I use a fair amount of cyclosporin. Cyclosporin is a drug that you can use to kind of put out the fire because it's a pretty strong drug and it's got a quick onset as opposed to methotrexate that takes about three months to even kick in. So uh, cyclosporin works pretty quickly, um, but it has uh, kidney toxicity and, you know, it requires um, blood test monitoring really pretty much every month. Unlike like methotrexate, you can get away with not doing blood tests quite as often, but cyclosporin, um, you have to do blood testing. And, and you want to use it for short term because long term, it's got a lot of side effects, including immunosuppression, that you just don't want to take that risk for a disease like uh, atopic dermatitis. And the other two, azathioprine, mycophenolate, I've used lots of, I've, I've treated children with that uh, in years past, but I haven't used them for years because they just don't work that well and they're much harder to use and they also have um, immune suppression, particularly uh, azathioprine, which has been associated with, um, uh, you know, hepatic cancer, particularly in uh, boys that have been treated for Crohn's disease. So it's a little scary.